Alright, aka Patters, we're gonna jump right into this. Future Shock issue one. Jace Fox. Future Shock, Jace Fox. Batman, the African American Batman, is here. Let's go. Alright, aka Patters, welcome to Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, sorry, do you guys remember this movie? I don't think anyone does. We're really talking about this. Jace Fox, the African American Batman for Black History Month, February 2024. People, how are you? Peter A. DeLuca here, aka Pad69. Say it with me, known through Philadelphia, PA, Europe, and the vast multiverse. This book has been floating around here for quite some time. And I finally sat down because I, I love themes. I'd like a month, I'd like a lead into like some type of long form study that's a theme. That's why even for something like the Marvels, we do it just a lot of things around Captain Marvel, the whole property around the release of that movie. Should I really be doing something around Aquaman 2? Because, you know, that's dropping on HBO Max at the end of this month. Yes and no. But, you know, when it comes to Black History Month, we, we have a long legacy of studying these characters, the creators, and the properties that they encompass. I sat down wanting something. I didn't know what exactly. Because I love Bruce Wayne. I love him. I just like the guy. I like his... Per portrayal of the Dark Knight, of Batman. I like the back and forth that the Dark Knight potentially is equally insane as the villains that he hunts, or that the villains are not insane, they're truly psychotic. These are the things that you love about Batman. I want some of those, some of that in here. I want, I want like a bangable guy. Let's be honest, Bruce Wayne is such a bangable dude. Uh, you know, like how many girls is Bruce Wayne bringing to Dubai every single month? I don't know, probably a lot of Instagram influencers, but you guys get the point. It's a comic book, disposable income, thrill me. Not really cheap though, this was $9, and I'm sick of these books being anthologies. Can we just do a book? Can we just have like a $9 awesome book. Why does it have to be like two or three stories? I hate it. Guys, anyway, Rainbow rant over. Time to hit that drawing table. We're going to have a look. Let's open this. All right, AKA Patters. Cheers. Gotta do some coffee for this one. I feel like I don't say this enough and I feel like enough of you don't take this to heart. Do not trust anyone that doesn't have a crypt action figure ready to go on your drawing desk. So previously for Black History Month, we did Menace. Jada Pinkett Smith, Rob Liefeld, and Dane Fra <laughs> What am I doing? Dane Frag is career work right here. Uh, I do feel uh, this is the peak of Dane Frag if you're stemming it from the Blood Strike days. So what like what exactly is this? What are our expectations? If you're not familiar, DC Comics has gone a little bit on the run and they've been race swapping some of these characters. Now, given some of these characters exist in DC Universe proper and some of them do not. This is Future State. We're dealing with an alternate Earth, an alternate reality, potentially multiple Earths and realities. This is all stemming from, and they do actually a good job of setting it up. Let me read this to you. See, we have the next Batman. Great logo and just uh, some great type here. The multiverse has been saved from the brink of destruction. With victory comes new possibilities. As, triumph, as the triumph of our heroes shakes loose the very fabric of time and space, from the ashes of death metal comes new life for the multiverse and a glimpse into unwritten worlds of tomorrow. I love that, a glimpse into the unwritten worlds of tomorrow. So I had no idea, idea that death metal essentially was the saving of the multiverse. Uh, death metal should be in its own logo here. So 
I guess like DC uh, spent years consolidating its timeline only to multiverse it. I guess like, you know, um, I guess maybe that's why a lot of people are on the fence with what ha happened in Death Metal. So I just want to make a little bit of a note here. We're pushing uh, a new Batman. And yes, alternate reality and all. Uh, you know, we want that character to land, to stand out, to be significant, and to be important. I don't know why they would cover his face. And this is a cover, too, by uh, Oliver Coppell. Uh, I know him through House of M. His work on House of M, flat out genius. Uh, him doing House of M and Jimmy Chung doing uh, Young Avengers at the time. Uh, that was the last great one-two Marvel comic tandem. Look both of those up. But yeah, I mean, we just have this like broken shield here. And we we have an image of the character. And yes, this is an alternate cover. This is why we don't do alternate covers. We do one cover. We don't sell the idea. We really don't. <sighs> Price tag is $9. Uh, it's tagged here to variant cover. So we get into, uh, yeah, a criminal being chased down the street. Uh, he has a he has some sick weapons, but the guy's wearing a mask, and he he's essentially now raiding, or someone's someone's now raiding. We we don't know if it's him or not, but the masks the masks are outlawed. You can't do them. Uh, artwork wise, yeah, I mean this is I would say for like an alternate Batman and ultimate like I would not want this style of artwork in. Detective Comics or Batman proper. I think for alternate, it works. I do like the orange highlight here. These these orange pops work because we're essentially we have a palette of orange and blue complementary. But then we get the guy. The most things and the more they change, the more they stay the same. And we have Batman here. Great action sequence we are selling i like the purple background i like the fuchsia pink background i like the red background for the death blow this guy is in trouble this is what we want from the dark knight but then the cops show up and uh essentially batman's gotta let the guy go he's gotta steal his mask so this whole thing was the dark knight saving this dude because he's wearing a mask and we find out that uh, you can't wear a mask and you get thrown into jail. <laughs> you go into the brig and, uh, you know, the cops, which is some of a running theme in this issue, the cops don't even want to report that they saw the Batman. Kind of cool. So it just sets up uh, some of a totalitarian city, a totalitarian world, and they are, you know, you cannot disguise your face. You cannot hide your face. Uh, great city shots here. And look, so this is uh, this is what I call like a sneak. There's two, side note, there's too many animatics in, in these short pages here. This is a sneaky one because we do have, like you can see the skyline and runs right into these two panels. So he just leaps down, you know, does a Batman move. And then this is where we get lost because we're at the Fox residence. Uh, you know, this girl's working for the ACLU, she's trying to, uh, get some legal, legal paperwork in order, she's like, Jace, what are you doing, he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, a little, little beat up from last night, uh, mom blames what happened to Tam on the mask, the ones who are bad, and the ones who think they're good, and every day, working to justify the peacekeeping, mom's just getting colder, so, yeah, so his mom's just trying to do what he's doing legally. So, we get no introduction. See, the problem with this page, see, we set up, we set up, at least we established this guy is the Dark Knight. At least we set up the guy is anti-totalitarian. We set up that he's, he's on his own and he's, he's changing the world in incremental portions against the system he's fighting the system this is everything we want in the dark knight but also what we want we want a balanced uh alter ego 
And we get no idea. She doesn't even call him by Ch- uh, by Jace. Like, we don't know his name. Like, if we're five or six pages in, and we don't know his name. And it's not like a mystery or anything. This, this is potentially one of the worst pages I've seen in an introduction story in a long time. This page needs information. But... We get somewhat of another animatic, but not really. Um, yeah, like here, like kind of like animatic, right? But we get the Bane gang. Uh, they get they get two thugs. They have to go cap someone, so they go out to go. Uh, you know, and his uh, these these two are brothers, and one brother's like, "What are you doing?" And one brother's like, "I got handled," and he's and this dude's like, "We got a mask for you." So that's cool. I like this, by the way. I always like that the, in the Batman animated series that they uh, open up Bane's mouth. I remember that being very much of a hot topic <laughs> back in the day. Um, yeah, and then we get like some some more backstory. Uh, J- Jace like shows up, uh, like his sister, his brother. They go back and forth. And we just find out that there's just, uh, you know, like, unfinished business within the family, like, so to speak. Uh, we get this cop talking, to, uh, again, another animatic. People, I like animatics, maybe, like, one per story. When we're constantly doing and using animatics, this is a little bit less of one. This is, all right, what happens is... It just takes us out of the story because we need shot rotations. We need uh, different things highlighted. We actually sometimes need close up of the people's faces so we know what they're doing. But uh, yeah, Gotham City Cop talking to another former Gotham City Cop. Uh, Some advice. Don't stick your fingers through the fence like that. So I kind of like that Uh, right here. Because, I don't know if you guys ever spent time in a uh, baseball cage. This does happen. <laughs> I feel like this detail's in there because um, someone saw it happen or someone was told. I mean, like, this this is a great detail. But, again, shout out to the coloring. Look at the purples. Look at the uh, gradations here. This is cool. I like that the background kind of looks... Uh, you know, we have the fence, right? We have the chain link fence, but the background looks like it's it's rendered in brush. Really cool detail. So we get the uh, here we go. We get the crime of the century. Some someone walking. We kind of saw this coming. The kid stops the other kid from shooting, and then at that point, the Dark Knight comes in, and we have another great sequence with you guess it, an animatic coming up. This panel here. So there's a lot of. Like Batman Year One in this, uh, there really is. There's a lot of Miller Daredevil, just with the way how some of the the uh, the presence of the hero works. But here we go, another animatic. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, great car crash, great sequencing. This uh, the action is done so well here. I look, same as earlier. With the purple and fuchsia, right? We had this on page three. Purple, fuchsia with the death blow. I don't know why that works so freaking well. See, we, we have uh, dark purple, middle purple, fuchsia purple. Uh, it is, it, this is well intended. Uh, this lands very nice. But yeah, and then we get uh, more of the, the kids, the Bane kids running off. The cops show up. Now, I don't understand because the masks are bad. And the kids are like, we're in trouble. We're wearing masks. But the cops show up wearing masks. And now Batman, everyone's wearing a mask in in this sequence. I'm confused. Uh, The Dark Knight saves everyone. Pulls them all the way up to the high tower. And then we have, um, you know, we're, we're done here. So here's... My problem. And w- w- do we need to go over? I mean, essentially, it ends the same as, as the the beginning, right? It ends just with an- another guy walking, but two masks showing up. If you bought this, this is not a thin issue, guys. Like, look at this. If you spent $9 for this, you would think all- the rest of these pages 
would be the story. And I have to say, like, this kind of moves. It keeps you going. It's not enough of Jace Fox. Uh, you you don't you. There's no reason to like Jace Fox. You're not convinced to like Jake Fox. Uh, but I guess we should just do it. Like editing, guys. Let's let's edit a little bit of the comic here because this is what happens right here. This is you spent nine dollars, and this is the waste. And people, I went through these stories and some of them are like look good artwork uh, like we're not knocking the quality of these stories we are merely making you get three stories in here and you don't know um the environment you don't know the world enough but if you spend nine dollars and you're thinking you're getting nine dollars worth what a funny joke and here we go we're done we are going to get rid of these pages. We don't need them. We just don't. Okay. This is this is our comic. This was nine dollars worth now. And I'm sorry for anyone that participated in these, but it's just not quite there. We don't want that. We want comics. It's like again. The $9 price tag partially needs to be the story. Uh, everything's, a, a, there's too many of these anthologies floating around. You spend nine solid bucks and you just, look, you get too many names. Like Paul Jenkins, like you, you get serious names here. And like you all know what to do. You just don't. John Ridley, like, hey, wait, decent job, like writing. Uh, this should have been like the first three issues of this story. And think of what you can do for that as a format. You can, when it's all digital, when you're drawing digital, you can do five pages a day. 